curse. <laughs> Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. It's time for an album review. The self-titled Red Horse album. These guys are a duo, Steve Pine, multi-instrumentalist, and Eli Kessler, percussionist. But those two terms don't quite sum up what these guys do on this album. What we essentially have on this debut record from Red Horse is a free improvisational noise album that just is one intense track after another. Now, I've enjoyed music like this in the past, for sure, but I don't often review it, usually because a lot of these records kind of come and go for me, just sort of pass by, but this one admittedly did stop me in my tracks on first listen, at least. I really do enjoy the harshness and the tension that noise music can bring. But I think with this new age of technology, a lot of the performance element of noise has sort of dwindled a bit. Because performing has essentially become, you know, flipping switches and twisting knobs and pressing buttons on laptops. Which isn't a terrible thing, but I do love hearing strong musicianship, and that's what you definitely get on this record. Though this record is noisy, it is all over the place, it's, it's sort of boundaryless in a lot of respects, how these two perform on this record really kind of had me in awe for at least a third of the album. The entire LP is about 45 minutes long, it's five tracks, none of which have you know, real intense titles or anything, it's just part one through five. And the album starts off with just a really attention-grabbing, metallic drone that just feels like I'm sitting in the middle of a thousand cymbal rolls going on all around me in a really panoramic way, and it's just one of the most ear-piercing and shrill sounds I've ever heard on a record. If you do listen to this, watch your volume. There definitely is kind of a masochistic pain element going through this first track, and the way the drone shifts, which is difficult to kind of take in, it's really subtle and, and really actually kind of intriguing. But things really take off on the second track of this album, so to say. It doesn't take off in a, you know, kind of a pumped up, you know, let's, let's just go kind of way. It's more like it takes off in that Steve and Eli really start making some noise on here with various pieces of percussion and I, I think, I think I'm hearing some electric piano, some guitar, some bass, everything that creates a tone is just playing very sour notes, just popping or swelling up all over the track. As the percussion, it kind of sounds like I'm listening to Zach Hill play from Hella, except he's not playing on a drum set, he's playing on a snare, and then basically anything and everything that he could bang a drumstick on that he found at a junkyard. It also kind of sounds like a hundred cuckoo clocks are ticking and, and talking in the room where these guys are performing this track. There, there, there are these really bassy rumbles underneath everything and the percussion starts whipping out these sounds that, that kind of sound like a helicopter is, is going by. It's kind of insane. And it's not like the drums and the percussion are abusive, just really heavy, just really relentless or anything like that. It's kind of like just they're, they're, they're busy. They're really busy. Listening to the second track on here is kind of like listening to the inner workings of an old, busted machine. I feel like I'm in the middle of a machine, and I'm seeing gears turning, and, and pipes are steaming, and, and, and things are rusted and squeaking. Everything is shaking. I just feel like I'm, I'm locked into, I'm lost inside of this really metallic, dark world. And even though none of the sounds on this track really feel synthesized, I still kind of sit here and wonder how they made half of the sounds on this song. <laughs> After the second track is where things on this LP kind of start to go downhill for me just a little bit. The sounds on the third track don't really seem to bring anything that the second track didn't. There's more guitar feedback on this, and I feel like there's there's more space between one noise and another, a little more breathing room, but at the end of the day, it just kind of sounds like 
two dudes making noise, whereas the soundscapes on the previous two tracks were really imaginative and different. Part 4 on this LP gets busy once again, just like the second track, but it, it feels a bit darker, almost in a Lustmordian kind of way. Lustmordian. There are these huge metallic thuds just pounding as the percussion just wildly swirls. It kind of sounds like a killer robot or an alien from another planet trying to break down an iron barrier to, to get past it and kill you. And the second half of this track really kind of dies down and, and gets quiet and gets subtle with these with these really high-pitched metallic drones. It kind of sounds like they're playing sound bowls or something. However they're making these sounds, they're they're really kind of tickling my brain a bit. They're very interesting. The last track, unfortunately, is where I, I really kind of got disappointed. Though this album does sort of seem to be a free improvisational noise piece done in five parts, I was hoping they wouldn't go down the road that the fifth track did, down this really stereotypical kind of noise chance piece road that reminds me of of, of dozens and dozens of pieces that I've heard from, from John Cage or John Zorn. And, you know, both artists, great, fantastic, pushed boundaries, helped make experimental music what it is today. I just feel like Red Horse is kind of toying around with this old hat idea of experimental music, that we basically have this, this quiet background, this blank canvas, and then we just start randomly creating unpredictable noises popping up in, in every possible direction. Though, when stuff like this is on, it, it kind of, you know, keeps me sort of interested in that, ooh, what's the next noise going to be? But ultimately, it never ends up being that memorable or that shocking. Red Horse has some really great musicianship on this album, and I think they're on to some really interesting sounds and ideas. My biggest issue with this record at the end of the day, though I did find it pretty likable, is that it blows most of its interesting and unique ideas right at the beginning of the album. There inevitably will be the question of, how do I enjoy music like this? What are the standards? What are the rules of thumb? How exactly do I get something out of music like this? You know, music like this doesn't have limitations as to what it can be. So there are really no limitations as to what you can like about it or what you could hate about it. Listening to an album like this is kind of like just sifting through a, a jungle and just looking for, I don't know, the missing link, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Just something, something just intriguing, something special to you. It involves concentration and just really focused listening. Pop music, stuff like that, though it isn't bad, it hands you its reasons to like it right off the bat, whereas this is more mysterious. I'm kind of feeling a strong 6 to a light 7 on this, but this is online, totally streamable and listenable for your pleasure, if you'd like to call it that. What do you think of this thing? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? And what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Red Horse, forever.